Okay, this is the M1 paper from January 2023. It's question number eight. As I scroll down, you can see this is a very big question. Uh, 15 marks here for a particle on an inclined plane. I'll give you time, maybe pause the video and just read through all the information we've got there. Okay, I want you back to me. Um, yeah, so we've got this situation, a mass two kilograms being pulled up a rough inclined plane so that we know we've got friction opposing it. Uh, the strange situation about this one is the fact that we've got this force acting at an angle here. But everything else is fairly standard. We've got our 30 degrees to our horizontal. We've got our mu being equal to 0 0.3. Um, so what we've got to do is to find the acceleration of P. So what I'm likely to do then is to get all my forces. Once I've got my forces, resolve them parallel and perpendicular to the plane and see where we go from there. Let's get this started with the diagram. So really important that you draw a nice big diagram here. We've got lots of forces um, to put on here. So let's get going with that. We know that this angle is 30 degrees here. We've got this particle. As soon as I've got a particle acting on a plane, I know I'm gonna have a weight acting down. That's 2G. And I know I'm gonna have a reaction force which will be perpendicular to the plane there. In our particular question now, we've got this 18 newtons here, and they've told me that's acting at 40 degrees to the plane, and because they told me it's a rough plane, and we're going up the plane, then I know that I'm gonna have a frictional force there. I may as well put on as well that mu is equal to 0.3. So first part of my process, put all my forces on, done. I'm now interested in parallel and perpendicular to the plane. I shouldn't need to spend any time explaining how to, just put those values on, how to resolve the uh, weight parallel to the plane and perpendicular to the plane is gonna be 2G cos 30 and 2G sine 30 can't do that you need to go back and do some more practice before you look at this style of question and then the key one is this 18 newtons here that we're going to need to have parallel and perpendicular to the plane and again that's relatively straightforward on my diagram 18 sine 40 and 18 cos 40 in there once I've got all those forces, once I've resolved all those forces, what am I going to do? Well, let's just quickly tell you and then we'll tell the examiner. What we want to do is F equals MA in this direction, okay? If I want to do F equals MA in this direction, then I really need to know what that F is. That F will be mu R, so I have to start off by doing R. Standard one would be R equals 2G cos 30, but obviously, in this situation, we've got that 18 sine 40 there. So it's going to be a slightly more complicated version when we're going through and doing it. Let's make it really clear to the examiner what we're going to do then. So we're going to resolve perpendicular to the plane, which was those last three forces I was looking at. They're all in equilibrium. So when I do F equals MA, let's just go back and have another look at them. I've got that... The 18 sign and the R are balanced out by this 2G cos going in the opposite direction. So I'm going to say R plus 18 sine 40 is equal to 2G cos 30. Okay, so that means that R is going to be equal to 2G cos 30 minus 18 sine 40. Now I'm not going to work out that value. I'm going to leave it all to the very end and work it out. What did I what was the reason for getting R? So that I could get F equals mu R. So if F is equal to mu R, F is equal to 0 0.3 multiplied by what we've just found, 2G cos 30 minus 18 sine 40. And again, I'm just going to leave that like that. I know I'm going to have to do a calculation right at the very end, but I'll just leave that as it is. So now we said, okay. Parallel to the plane, what forces do I have? Well, I've got my F, I've got my 18 cos, and I've got my 2G sine 30. But we know, I should put this on at the start, but I can put it on now, we know that it's accelerating 
up the plane, it's moving up the plane there. So if it's moving up the plane, then this 18 cos 40 is going to be bigger than the other two. So when I do my F equals MA now, I can do all that. Let's tell the examiner what we're doing. So resolve parallel to the plane. F equals MA, and as I said, the 18G cos is the bigger one. So 18G cos 40 minus 2G sine 30 minus F is equal to mass times acceleration. I'm going to replace F now. So I've got, let's give myself a bit of space here, 18G cos 40 minus 2G sine 30 minus this bit that we had previously, 0 0.3, 2g cos 30, minus 18 sine 40, wow, is all equal to 2 times acceleration. So the acceleration then is going to be half of all of that. I'm going to let you go away and work that all out on your calculator. Uh, divide it by 2, the answer comes out to be 1.18, but we're going to say 1.2 meters per second squared, let's put the units in. And I've done that because obviously two significant figures, if you've got a question involving G, your answer should always be to two significant figures. Okay, so we've done part A, which was to find the acceleration of P. What does it then say? It says two points A and B lie on the line. Uh, a, B is equal to five and B is above it. Okay, so it's going from A up to B. A uh, particle passes through A with a speed two in the direction of A, B. Find the speed of B of P, sorry, as it passes through B. Right, let's draw a really quick diagram for this part here then, so that I can do my SUVAT. It's obviously a SUVAT question. Not putting all the detail on now, all I'm doing is saying it starts off at A here and it moves up to B there. And then what did they tell me? They told me that U was equal to two. They told me that this distance was five meters, and what we're trying to do is to work out V at the end of that. Okay, it looks pretty much like a classic SUVAT question there. Let's put SUVAT down and see what we can find. So S is equal to five meters, U is equal to two, V is the thing that I'm looking for, and we've just worked out A as being 1.2, or use the exact value you had in your calculator, but I've got S, U, V, and A, We've got S, U, V, and A. The SUVAT formula is V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So pretty simple from here. Substitute everything in. 2 squared, 2 lots of 1.2, lots of 5. So do all that, square root it. V works out to be equal to 3.98, and I'm going to call that 4.0 meters per second. Again, two significant figures because G in my question. Okay, so parts A and part B, not too bad. Right, what they then say is the force of 18 Newtons is now removed. Okay, um, when, when it gets to B, when it gets to that point, um, the force is taken away. As a result, P comes to rest at point C. Determine whether uh, P will remain at rest and you must show all your stages of the calculation uh, as you're going through and doing this. So this is quite a complicated little idea. Let's just talk about it first and then we'll actually... Um, go ahead and do it. So what we're saying is, let's come back to this diagram here, is that at the point B here, what happens is you suddenly don't have the force pushing it up anymore. So what it's going to do is it's going to go from B, it'll go up to a point C here. There's, a neg there's an acceleration slowing it down, a deceleration slowing it down. So it'll go up to that point, and then you'd think it would start coming back down here. Well, if it does start coming back down here, then I've got to have an acceleration in that direction at that time. But we've really got to have a really careful consideration of what the forces are going to be like there. So let's, let's get on with it and do it, and I'll explain it to the examiner at the same time as explaining it to you then. So part C here, what we're going to do is we're going to say... I don't need this bottom part of the diagram. And you don't, you don't need to do this diagram. This is just me explaining it so that you guys can see what I'm doing at the same time here. If you understand the process of it, you can maybe get away without doing too much of a diagram here. 
But A and B, that, that's already happened. So what we're now saying is it's going to go up to a point C where it stops. So what forces are acting? This is absolutely key. What forces are acting at this time? Well, we've got our 2G. We'll have our 2G cos... Uh, what was it? Cos 30, wasn't it? 2G cos 30 and our 2G sine 30. They don't change. We'll still have our R, our reaction force here. But now we don't have... Um, the force P acting anymore. So you might think, well, that's it. But no, 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 we've also got friction. Now, this is the, the, the most important part. What's happening to friction? As we get to that top point, it's going to start moving in this direction now. If it moves at all, it's going to start moving in this direction here. And what that then means is that friction now flips over and friction will now be going in that direction. That's a really complicated idea and concept, and some of you aren't going to get that. You might need to read the video a couple of times. But for the stronger students on here, you'll go, oh, yeah, that's really, really clever, which it is. It's a four marker. So, OK, well, you know, if we don't get these four marks, we can just move on and do the rest of the paper. But for those people who do get it, I think it's, it's important to do, do that diagram now. And again, I'll put a lot of uh, detail missing out the diagram, but the important key parts are on there. Um, and I'm taking a lot longer than a take four mark question. But critically, friction has now changed direction. And now what I want to know is it says, does it move down again? Well, it moves down again as long as the acceleration here is actually going to go in that direction. If acceleration is positive um, or is negative, depending on which way I do it. But if the acceleration is going in that direction, then it'll work. Let, let, me, let me go through and do it. So resolve parallel to the plane. In fact, actually, no, before that, let's resolve perpendicular to the plane because we're going to have R, aren't we? Resolve perpendicular to the plane because R will change now. I've only got these two forces acting, haven't I? So R is going to be equal to 2G cos 30. Now, I'm doing that much, much quicker this time, aren't I, than I did it last time, but I've already done the work already once. Resolve parallel to the plane then. And I'm gonna get F equals MA. What forces have I got going on now? Well, I'm gonna say 2G sine and F are the only two forces acting in that direction. Um, if I, I, I don't know which way it's going, so I'm, I'm gonna take that it's actually going in that direction and then what I want is for my A to be negative or I could go in that direction then I want my A to be positive so just choose a way to go uh, I'm going to say let's have it going or assume it's going in that direction there so I'm going to say F minus 2G sine 30 is equal to mass times acceleration And again, my F will be mu R, that won't have changed, is going to be 0 0.3 times 2G cos 30 here. So a lot, lot of complicated stuff to be looking at here. 0 0.3, 2G cos 30, minus 2G sine 30, equals 2A. And here, if I do it this way around, then my acceleration works out to be, doesn't matter what it is, my acceleration is a negative. And if my acceleration is a negative, then it means it is going to be going down the plane. So P will start to move down the plane. Write all that out. P will start to move down the plane. Yeah, it's a really complicated and really nice question. Is it? I know it's difficult, but it's the very last part of the very last question. So this really is to try and distinguish between A and A star students or between people who might possibly get 100% on this. But yeah, really nice question there. For most of you, you need to be able to go through A and B and then that four marks of part C, that's the cherry on top. But um, hopefully I've explained it so that a lot of you will understand that.